you. <laughs> well, you know, when I first met you, one of the things that I really liked was your story about your starting, basically, even it's going to school in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And then uh, your time that you spent in Nashville, the story about all that. So yes. that's what I'd love to capture again today. Okay. So okay. just kind of, you know, just kind of talk to me about that again okay. and tell your story. What is your well, story? <laughs> my story is um, I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin, and my mom taught me how to sew when I was 12. So I started making my own clothing because I was tall and thin, and in those days they didn't make clothing for tall, thin people. Mm -hmm. That all my pants were like <laughs> high water. So I started making my own clothing, and when my classmates would say, "That's really cool. Where did you get that?" That just spurred me on. Like, oh my gosh, that's all it takes for a creative person to want to just do more. So um, I sewed for many, many years and ended up. I was married for a while, and when I got divorced, I decided to put myself through school and get a degree in apparel design. So I moved to the Twin Cities and um, joined the College of Design there and got a four-year degree in apparel design. And one of my first gigs was making horse show apparel for people in the area. There were a lot of people that showed quarter horses. Um, I did uh, some clothing for Pasofino trainers and Arabian trainers, so there was a, a lot of market there. So I started doing that, and I specialized pretty much in Western because that was my lifestyle, that was me. I had horses, I liked to ride. And uh, throughout the course of the four years, I did a lot of leather work and, and kind of some high-end type stuff, and uh, my professor and a lot of my classmates encouraged me to go to Nashville. Your stuff is so good, you need to go to Nashville. <laughs> so I went down there on a trip and checked it out and got some really good feedback and sold some things and moved there. So I was there for about three and a half years and I did so for some of the country music artists. Um, a lot of band members, not a lot of times the main people because they already had sponsorships. They were getting free stuff from all the big companies, but um, I found throughout the, th the three years that I was there, most of them liked my stuff and would like to have had stuff, but they didn't want to pay for it. They thought I should just make it for them for free, because it was going to be seen on stage. Well, how does that pay your rent? <laughs> I mean, do I go to someone and say, I don't have my rent this month, but I made a shirt for Garth Brooks, does that count? <laughs> so after three and a half years, I decided I'm going to go live in the mountains where I've wanted to be for a long time. And I moved to outside of Denver area and started sewing for a little shop called Tatanka and did a lot of custom things for her and her clientele and ended up um, deciding that I wanted to live in Colorado for the rest of my life and found some property out here in the Guthy area and built a little place and I have my horses and I do... Um, a lot of different design work when people know that I sew, you get all kinds of weird projects sometimes. <laughs> Can you make this? I'm making um, curtains for a camper for some friends now. Um, they are doing uh, living quarters in their horse trailer and doing it out of beetle kill pine, so it's really pretty. So I'm doing some curtains for them. And then a gal found out that I am doing stuff for dogs, so she brought me a whole bunch of faux shearling and I'm making sheep outfits for her sheep dogs. She's going to be little Bo Peep and the dogs are going to be sheep for Halloween. <laughs> so I'm doing that. But my focus now is um, of course doing the uh, custom leather stuff for dogs. Uh, I was volunteering for a group that was helping to train dogs for veterans with PTSD and um, ended up being kind of their outfitter. I made special halters for the dogs that we can teach them to lead and they can't pull out of the halters. And then I started making vests and when I saw what was out there, it's pretty much utilitarian and nylon and webbing and standard colors. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to make something out of leather? So I designed a little vest that had zippers on it and studs and kind of um, more like a motorcycle jacket style, but for dogs. And it went over really well. And so I thought, you know, maybe I can make a business out of this. 
So I did some research and went online, and I don't I have not found things um, like what I'm offering. So I'm hoping to maybe create a little niche market and do some specialized sewing and do some really creative, cool design stuff for dogs. <laughs> and it has little functional pockets, so if you have like small items that you want your dog to help you carry around or keep you organized, you have the little pockets. And then it has the conchos, which gives it a little western flair with some turquoise in it. And then this one <clears throat> is my steampunk version. I have a girlfriend who's going to dress up in steampunk for Halloween. And she has a Belgian Melanois. And she shows her and has done very well. So um, I think it'll be kind of cute. She'll <laughs> be parading around in this. It, it has pockets that are functional also. And it's just, um, I got inspired by looking at Pinterest, at steampunk things on Pinterest. And it's just like, it makes no sense. They just have stuff glommed all over, and it's metal, and it's just real industrial looking. So I just kind of went wild. I opened up the drawers of my Notions cabinet and just started dragging stuff out. These are actually clasps that you put on fur coats. So they, um, that's how you snap a fur coat open and closed. But it doesn't do anything here. It just looks cool. <laughs> And then this one is <clears throat> for a service dog. He's a Great Dane. And um, the gentleman that owns him is a veteran. And so he is a bona fide service dog. He'll be wearing this vest and he'll be taking it to Germany with him. They're moving to Germany for a couple years again. Wow. And then they'll be back in the United States. So this one <clears throat> is, um, it will have eventually, I'm going to put this little name tag on it. This will be hand tooled and then dyed. Um, a couple different colors so it stands out and his name will be put on right here and then this is designed so that there's a bunch of space left um, for that motorcycle jacket kind of ambiance um, he'll be collecting patches of different sorts um, they have a lot of different service dog patches that you can put on things now um, that are pretty cool and eagles and all kinds of neato stuff so that'll probably be pretty full someday of designs and patches. It's made in USA, but you know that's one of the selling features I want to be is that it's made here in the United States. It's made by you know a person, not all mechanized and machines and someone in a line where they just do one little step and it goes down through the whole line as a you know, big process. It's all hand done. So made in so. America by the all-American girl. That's right. Farm girl. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How much more American can you That's get than somebody right. that shovels poop? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and has morning chores every day. <laughs>